Right. Um, just on uh, acquiring uh, the, the Tyrrell Smith gear here, um, reading through them, I feel very privileged to be able to read through his personal scrapbooks. And um, there is s some really interesting stuff in there. I mean, my memory's going rubbish in a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm in BSAs and Rudges and, and Tyrrell Smith coming out of my ears and all sorts. But um, there was one night I was in the garage um, looking through the books and the papers and I was, I was on the floor in stitches of it with a piece of paper and uh, Elaine walked in and she said, what's what are you doing? And I said, oh, you've just got to read this letter and um, it, it, oh, the best thing for it to, or the best person to read it out a little bit is a, uh, an old comrade, Mr. Dave Mack, wherever he is. <laughs> Um, and I don't, there's, a, there's a couple of things. I'd like him to read it out, just just for yourselves, because this is typical Irish letters. And uh, <laughs> and also, um, Mr. Smith liked uh, a little bit of music, and uh, the guest star here is going to do a little bit of a turn of the music that Tyrrell Smith asked him to uh, put together. But anyway, I don't really do you need any glasses on this or a Now, I'll let him read through this. Hello. Anyway, Hello. <laughs> I must be the uh, I must be the idiot of the evening because I've got this Irish letter to read, and um, um, I didn't really need translating. I just needed reading very slowly, and um, for some strange reason, Mike thought that I was the right. Um, the right person to try and read this to you, um, to try and make an understanding. But I thought maybe, maybe it would be worth telling our foreign guests particularly what this letter is about before I, I read the, the whole content of it. The letter is about an Irishman in 1930 who bought a new Model 20 um, Norton, right? Brand new Model 20 Norton, which he was not particularly happy with because not long after he got it, he decided he didn't like it having sinuses and fishtails. He wanted straight through exhaust pipes so that he could hear the noise. But the way that he explained it to his dealer it was not the easiest way, in my opinion, of getting it done. Because <laughs> it was done in a very Irish sort of uh, understanding. If you know. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll, I'll stop occasionally as I go along so that you can get a gist of what it took me a little while. I read it a couple of times and I thought, well, what's the man on about? <laughs> it says here, in connection with the Model 20 Two Port Norton, which I purchased from you on the 11th of the 11th, 1930. I have since received the spare parts list from the manufacturer. And one thing that I forgot to ask you before I purchased the model, the Model 20, uh, I intended not to have the exhaust system with the sinuses and tailpipes. Uh, it, uh, I wanted it with straight through blow pipes, whatever you call it, straight through blow through exhaust pipes with fish tails. I intended telling you this straight away, but of course this was after I got the bike. <laughs> and, uh, if I could have told you before, uh, then, uh, then you will, could have fitted the straight through exhaust packs before you, did, uh, before you dispatched the bike to me. Now that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. I didn't want the sciences at all. At all, at all, at all. <laughs> uh, and the fishtails would do quite well as sciences. I've only been out on this machine one day since I've had it, and it was a dry day and very nice. So the pipes and sinuses are still like new. Now this is the deal I want to do you. How are you going to do the deal? I don't really know. This, this is the deal I want to do you. you will you have the exhaust pipes, sinuses and fish tails back? Clean, unsoiled, so you can send me a new straight through, blow through as he called it, exhaust system 
for my Norton with fish tails. I will then return, the way it keeps on repeating this, I don't know. I will then return to you the exhaust pipes and thalluses and fish tails from my bike. Now, <coughs> what? This is all I want you to do. And I will have a bike complete as I intended. I'm not, uh, I'm not contacting the Norton people to do this. I want you to do it straight away. <laughs> and you send me the blow through straight exhaust pipes. <laughs> I will leave it to you to send the other ones back. I will return the exhaust pipes and sciences and fish tails to you when I receive the new ones. And now you can on to say. Uh, I, would, I want a really good sharp crack. <laughs> I want a really good sharp crack. But owing to the sciences and fish tails and this exhaust system, this is impossible. <laughs> so please supply me with the straight through blow of the exhaust pipes and fish tails. And I will return these exhaust pipes to you. So it goes on and on and on. Uh, uh, was that a bit there on the, the big PTO? Exchange for the straight through exhaust pipes. <laughs> and then they'll start all over again now. <laughs> I wonder how Paul Horton will get on with a letter like this. According to the specialist which I have received uh, from the manufacturer, the exhaust pipes. Uh, would be cheaper than the pipes and sandwiches and fish tails, as the sandwiches are 2.2 shillings. But I don't want, wish to make a big point about this. I will make a bargain exchange with you for a straight through ex exhaust pipe and sandwiches and fish tails. I will return my exhaust pipes and sandwiches to you. Uh, so you can exchange them at a bargain price. I don't want the sandwiches. Because I want a good sharp crack. I haven't got... Uh, um, what's that? Oh, I, really I haven't got Owen any more on this. I, fit it. I hope they will fit the bag. So please send me on the straight through exhaust pipes and fish tails and I will return the sinuses and pipes and return post. Perhaps you may not have the straight through and sinuses in stock. Perhaps you may not have them in stock. If not, please get in touch with your manufacturer immediately. All this trouble would have been avoided if I had ordered the straight through exhaust pipes and fish tails after I got the bike. How could you have ordered them after you got the bike? Anyway, anyway, he goes on to say, uh, for my Model 22 Port Norton, I forgot to tell you that when I ordered the bike that I wanted straight through exhaust pipes and fish tails. So I am sorry to putting you to putting you to all this trouble. Now after. Hope you have them in stock so you can send me the straight to the Josh Banks and Fishtail to put on my M20 on my Model 20 Norton. Uh, I, if I have them on Wednesday and I can send the exhaust pipes and services of the Model 20 Norton in return post, you will straight away, uh, you know, you can have them straight away. The exhaust pipes, in, if you have the exhaust pipes in stock, if not, let me know by return post when you are likely to have these. And if you have them in stock, <laughs> please send them back. The same is on the return post. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, because I must have this good sharp crack. <laughs> and I will send the exhaust pipes and sciences for the model 90 Norton to you. Yours faithfully. And there's another bit, uh, another page at the end here. Just a little bit at the end. 
that's all. P.S. 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 I want to have the straight through exhaust pipe speed to my Model 20 Norton immediately. Please send them to me by return post, and I will return to you the exhaust pipes and tanks that are fished out by the Model 20 Norton. <coughs> P.P.P.S. I hope you know what this is all about. Mike was telling you so much about uh, all about his racing ridges and bikes and, and he's made a fantastic job of collecting all the bits and pieces including this Taylor Smith history and books and the, 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 particularly the, the signed uh, certificates that he's got of all the race meetings that he won and the awards that he won and so on and so on. I've got quite a bit of them as well but not nearly as much as Mike's got and I happen to be telling him that the, the, one of the very last times that I, I knew, uh, I knew, I knew Toes quite well because he lived in Solihull and I lived in Coventry. And I made a habit after I joined the Vintage Club of taking him to the BMCC meetings every month when he stopped driving. He had a lot of trouble with his eyesight and other parts of, uh, in the later years. So I used to pick him up once a month and take him. Uh, I'd take him to the, to the BMCC meetings. And quite often he would uh, we'd stop at his house on the way back and he would sit in the car or we go in the house and we would talk in ridges and he'd make telling tales and all sorts. And we became quite friendly and told me lots of things that happened in the... I, was, I think I had only two ridges at the time and uh, uh, was talking to ridges. And uh, about five years later, four or five years later, he made him the president of the Vintage Motorcycle Club. He was up to president. Now in those days, the AGM, the Vintage Motorcycle Club, which was nearly always held in the Midlands, was always made into a very social event, and people would bring their wives and girlfriends and all sorts, and they had food and, uh, and tea and coffee and all laid on. It was turned into quite a social occasion. And John Rotherham, the chairman at that time, contacted me, because he had found out that Terry Smith uh, was quite fond of bits of Irish music of different type, and he contacted me and said to me, uh, can you play this piece of Irish music? And he's, uh, he's uh, holding it down the phone to me. And uh, I'm saying, well, you better, you better tell me which version of it, because in Ireland have different versions of nearly each song. A lot of them are rebel songs, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, and some of them are the original version. He said, no, no, the, the, original, the original version. I said, why are you asking me that? He said, because at the AGM, well, Terrell Smith is going to be made the new president. And we thought it was a big surprise for him, being as he was bringing his wife, if we could get you and maybe some other musician to play a bit of Irish music, maybe we could get them up to waltz around on the floor and we could uh, make a bit of an event of it. And I said, well, if you think it, I, I can do it well enough, I'll have a go. So I got involved like that, straight into the vintage club. And then, then then days there was another chap, I'm sure a lot of you must have remember old Pinky, John Pinkerton. The, the cycle man, he's dead and gone right, with the penny fathers, no? Well, his son, his son Timothy, his oldest son, was quite a good violin player. He was uh, professionally taught and he played the violin. And we talked him into coming as well. And the idea was that we would get up and play this music and Terrell Smith would, uh, uh, would be quite surprised because he didn't know that we were going to do it. So it was the idea for a bright friend here Right here tonight, that I should try and play this bit of music to you, to you on my screen box, just to finish you, to give you the mood, if you think that's reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> 